In the uh, war room, you're vetted. I know who you are. I know where your family lives. Yeah. I can roll with a fucking army anywhere I go. If I want to get someone's door knocked in LA, I just message the war room. They'll fucking 10 dudes outside his house tomorrow. I've got all everything because I've got an organization of thousands of men who will do anything for me. You think I can't find out shit? I've got a fucking army. I run the biggest mafia in the world. I'll prove the power of the war room right now. Right now. I became the most Googled man on the planet. Yes. I hacked every single social media algorithm to a way which people are sitting there trying to work out how I did it and they can't work out exactly how no. it's done. The war room did that. I went to them and said, I've decided to go overt. When you talk about America, America's a failed society. 3,000 members all around the world. And I wanted a network of genuine predators. And what we do for our members is we teach them how to make more money. We talk a lot about mental programming stuff. We, I teach everything about I know about the pimp gang from head to toe. Not because I'm saying men should go out there and pimp women or start webcam businesses. The war room is the most beautiful thing on the planet. That is what brotherhood's about. That's what manhood is about. And if you think the test is impressive, wait till you find the true secrets of the war room inside of its walls. This is the war room of Andrew Tate. Ladies and gentlemen, in my last video, I brought attention to Tate's hypnotist, priest master, Shi Yan Hui, or Iggy Samwise on Twitter. We found some interesting clips. Here I will share with you my secrets. We found some interesting books on a very interesting subject, which in broad strokes centers around belief, will, and transformation. Even with recent allegations of organized crime, Tate's network, The War Room, has gone largely unmentioned. In this video, I will connect The War Room to what is unfolding right now and shine light on three secrets I've discovered. The women. Mind control. Talk about the, the, the deep hypnosis involved. I don't know if I should tell The War Room secrets, but we have some. No, 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 don't. And social media conquest. The algorithm is exceptionally smart. Like I said, if I were to tell the secrets of how I've done what I've done, me and my team inside the war room, it's worth billions of dollars, so I'm not going to. Stage one of a three-step plan. The conquest is continuing. I want all the hit pieces, the professionally edited, long form, very well-researched hit piece where the guy's sitting there going, this guy's bad for everybody. Yeah. And, and they all and come I get it inside of my blood. Boom! I tracked the war room's origins to this tweet by Iggy. The first time the master of Wudan commanded his Gs to gather. They gathered for what? to learn and build the power to weaponize, optimize, and monetize a man's greatest asset, the women in his life. Now, I want you to notice this woman right here again. That's what I call a pattern. We got Ranieri, Iggy, Epstein, and the Tates. But there are two other girls who are currently not in the picture. Arena and Mel, who may have been the first two bottom bitches. Arena, you may recognize from the beating videos and following vindications. What you guys saw in the video is just what we used to do. It was just pure game. There were also some past allegations that mentioned both girls. Andrew and Arena like to lure models from other countries. Another model was part of this setup, Oh My Mel MFC. Now these two girls can be found on Arena's YouTube channel using very interesting words. And I was like, so into this movie, I was like hypnotized by the movie, and then all of a sudden... Now to be fair, this is how the war room began. It's just a small piece of what it's become. And the goal is to try and create men who are sovereign, who have passports, who have residencies, who have bank accounts, who are above governmental control. They're making a bunch of money. They have healthy relationships with females and they live very good lives. And that's my primary concern at the moment is the war room. An entrepreneur named Alexander Gray spent one year inside of the war room and wrote a review about it. In his video, I've highlighted two key points. The first of which is the way the war room is structured. The telegram group you get in initially, it's called the mass hall. It's just dudes that joined that haven't mostly not achieved anything yet. If you think you joined the war room and then you, there are just millionaires waiting for you or millionaires you can ask all the questions and build businesses with, you're in for a surprise. The millionaires and great guys with all the actual network you actually find within the elite room. So you gotta work your way up, which is fair. Jordan Welch, you should have done some more research, my guy. I'm finding out all these secrets for free. Point number two is the use of the term dragon. The war room helps you a lot with this because they teach you a nice term, which is the dragon for women, right? In the war room, you just get this, you get this belief that men are just better than women anyway, because you're virtually trained on how to tame the dragon. Think of them as humans, because with this term of the dragon as some sort of toy to give you what you need and to make money with them. The purpose of this is to dehumanize women so that people with more morals produce less opposition. What did Goebbels say, the propaganda minister of the Third Reich? 
Once people are afraid, give them a common enemy. They'll do anything you want. That's the, 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 the Nazis knew this. Everyone knows it. That's right, Andrew. Just like the Nazis. And Iggy's tweets corroborate this. There's a lot more, but he usually uses a dragon emoji, so they're a bit harder to find. But I'm about to really blow your mind. Okay, don't blink. Priest Master Xian Hui, how at peace he- Did you catch that? Run it back. They really edited in a dragon. Wait, I'm not done. You remember Mel, right? This is her Twitter header. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this shit up, man. You can't. The spiritual leader of the war room, um, I guess is, would be the, the essence and, and, and attitude of my father. A man compelling enough to inspire a biography and brash enough to refer to the queen as his bitch. Yeah, he would refer to the queen as the bitch. The bitch. He's like, then I put my bitch here. There's also some questionable tweets. Got arrested beating a woman. Now, like it or not, we got a real brother. And also, I can no longer tell male thought from female thought. Hold on, a lot of these are making sense. No hard evidence. May he rest in peace. Only little dots to connect. I was just raised by the OG. My dad was a G. Big, black, chess master, huge, drinking, gambling, pimping. Yeah, in a Catholic society, everything has changed. Same. Because the, the, the court systems are behind women, taking children, taking your own. In the middle, but we just letting off the instrumentals no more. Swear, swear, swear. Boom, did you see that? Dark game psychopathy. Now remember the way the organization is structured because this is very important. At the bottom, you have the mess hall, then you have the elite room, and at the tip top, you have the inner circle. This is like Alpha Wolf, Sartorial Shooter, and then we have Jay Waller and Sterling Cooper. These two gentlemen lead the social media front and will teach you the fine art of dicknosis. Apex, we'll talk dark triad shit. Let me tell you some dark triad <laughs> shit. Women don't have the capability to defend themselves or their ideas. So they're, they're gonna go along with an idea they heard from somebody else right. in general, right? So all Agreed. women are programmed, especially during sex. That's when women are most programmable because they're most vulnerable. She's in her subconscious mind, which is why when he says something to her while, he's, while she's in that state, it slips right in here. It yep. slips into a subconscious. It becomes a program. Guys, this is how you get close to Tate. You need to learn and create value. See, one of the subtle mechanisms that keeps Tate's followers motivated is the desire to finally meet him. Listen, if you want to ever meet me in person, you must follow the white path, right? The white path is something which is described inside the war room. Certain things about you must be qualified as an individual before I can speak to you. It's like trying to teach algebra to a pigeon. Until you follow the white path, you're not ready for Morpheus to free your mind. I could talk at you all day long. It won't change how you behave and how you act. Yeah. Not until you're prepared. You must open your mind to be ready for the wisdom. That's what the white path is for. Inside of the war room, there's a very, very organized and systemized. Okay, but what's all this mean? Well, Tate is not being investigated for no reason. Houses University, get some money, join the war room, prove yourself amongst a society of men which are doing something. Look, we're not breaking any laws, fucking FBI. You can join as much as you want. I compared this to the Nexium case before because Keith Raniere weaponized the psychosexual dynamic between men and women to lure women into sexual slavery frame by frame by frame. If yeah. there is a girl out there who is slave like, if there's a girl out there who's 10 out of 10 with big tits, who's slave like obedience, who's perfectly good looking and does everything her man says and she'll live with you in the basement. But it wasn't until Ranieri consensually branded them, but without their knowledge that the brand was actually his initials just turned sideways. That is when his house of cards came crashing down. 22 girls have their names tattooed, <laughs> your name, sorry, tattooed on their body. Is, yep. that, is that correct? That is correct, yeah, that, that's um, an accolade. And it is that deep conversion, and that's how they end up getting the tattoos and stuff. This isn't me going up to girls saying, you better get a tattoo. It's 0% like that. Yeah, yeah. She's like, I love you. I was like, well, how do I know you actually love me? She's like, I love you forever. I said, well, prove it, do a tattoo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but how do I know you're not gonna leave me? Why would I leave you if you misbehave? Okay, they want to. When coercive control is involved, it's very difficult for police to build a case. The girls might just say they're living their best life, and who are you to say otherwise? Behave in a subservient way, which is what Keith Ranieri was promoting. Fell into a pattern of compliance because that was the safest thing I could do. SOP was a very abusive curriculum. They can make fun of you, demean you. The freakiest part for me about that training is that at the end of it, you love your male mentors 
and you feel like this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Ever since you first heard the name Andrew Tate, the War Room has been implementing a three-stage plan. Now strap the fuck in because shit's about to get serious. The first stage of Andrew's plan is to gain the influence of the military age males and increase traffic into his freshly revamped Hustlers University 2.0, not a pyramid scheme by the way, and from there build them to the white path of the War Room where their minds will be liberated. So they put together this plan, okay? Where are all the young people at? TikTok. Their algorithm uses something called varial feedback to fuel addiction. Tate would know about this with his casinos. This offers a wide range of experiences, so you never know what you're gonna get. It's kind of like popping a chest on Fortnite. Now, we all know the War Room and Hustlers University is the content machine. It's incentivized through the affiliate marketing program, and it decentralizes Tate's brand and making him effectively uncancelable. Tate studies and practices crowd hypnosis and oration to execute a massively successful digital reprogramming. He also leverages the biological drive innate to all men, the desire to chase women. This captures the largest market as possible, saying things to shock you like, I think 99% of the world's problems will be solved if females walk through life with their body count on their forehead. Now shock is the key factor here because it draws in all of your attention, full engagement, where now he can start installing frames, Aikido. Now the magic is that this produces positive engagement through humor <laughs> and negative engagement through disgust. Overclocking your processor, drawing you into entrancement. I didn't put a magic spell on the world. I didn't put a spell on the world. I didn't put a magic spell on everybody. I didn't put a spell on the world. I didn't do any magic. I don't think it was a magic spell. I didn't put a fucking magic spell on anybody. We didn't do that with magic. I'm not a magician. And also the most important thing for HU for me is to give everybody the money they need to join the war room. In the war room, your life will change forever. Then you will truly join the movement for the attack against the Matrix. Join the war room and you'll learn and there'll be a, there's a spiritual journey involved as well. Once Tate was done Genghis conning the whole internet and getting himself canceled, stage two began. Now bear with me here the way in which tate was banned proves the existence of an opponent look if you've never been skeptical of the 2008 situation epstein GameStop, or any of that stuff you should stop and smell the roses allegedly banks payment processors airbnb and uber canceled him you uber. name it uber somebody is making these calls do you see the chess game yet hustlers university is shut down but then returns as the real world and with all eyes on him Tate goes on to spread the true message. I'm gonna make history by breaking the monopoly of the tech companies. Yeah, for, for everybody. Propaganda. Propaganda. The same, they're trying to hypnotize you in the same way, but they're trying to destroy the masculine imperative to prevent revolution. Everybody is trying to manipulate you all the time, including me. But the war has come for all of us. And your choices are very simple. Either you have your mind right and you understand objective reality and you're resisting against the matrix and their narratives, or you're accepting their garbage so you don't have to resist against them. And now you're arguing with your own mind. We're doing this not to be philanthropic, but because we're trying to build an army of the right mindset. I have everything in the world. I could just disappear and fuck girls and sit on yachts and not give a shit about any, any of you or give a shit about humanity or give a shit about trying to actually expand the consciousness of the planet. And then it says, I specialize in the following. Wars fought, assassinations plotted, revolutions started, uprisings quelled. When young military age males rebel against a system, that rebellion is a revolution. Mm. If enough that if thousands of men get in a group on the street, governments change. They want you all depressed and sad. The Matrix is genuinely your enemy for that reason. And the podcast appearances continue. And anybody who stands up and speaks loudly up against the Matrix, if you do it too loud, too long, sooner or later they see you as a problem, they want you to go away. I understand that you get three strikes in this game. Strike one is they try and shut you up and discredit you. If that fails, they try and put you in jail. And if that doesn't work, they kill you. For everyone watching at home, I would never kill myself. I would never ever kill myself. I would never kill myself. They tried to cancel me because of my influence. Mm. So I'm saying this now so everybody knows at home that I would never ever under any circumstances, no matter what they say, kill myself. <laughs> I've had serious long conversations contemplating whether they're gonna try and kill me. The reason I think they saw me as such a threat is because of the influence I had over the number one demographic they wanna keep control over, which is the military age males, the young males. That's the number one most scary demographic for a government. All right, now think about this. Andrew Tate has everybody talking. He is more divisive than Trump was in 2016. Let me list out a few coincidences. Steve banned, Sneeko banned, Aiden suspended, Elon buys Twitter, Kanye full Kanye, Peterson attacked, Hamza restricted, could I be next? If you still believe this is as simple as misogyny, you aren't paying attention. Sometimes you have to be the villain to defeat the villain. Yeah. And the War Room soldiers were specifically, listen, I said to the War Room, look, World War III mate, I ain't gotta come. The number of people I've done this on, if there's any fucking influencer idiot, 
He thinks they know shit. He's all anywhere on the internet. I have his fucking address, his mom's address, his dad's address, where they all fucking live, where they work, where his banking is, all the pictures of him fucking naked, his ex-girlfriends, fucking all of it. Standard protocol. I got all of it. Oh, so that's why I got air tagged at the grocery store or why my hard drive corrupted or why I'm getting verification codes to my phone and people trying to log into my cash app, huh? Is that you, War Room? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm the youngest of five. I'm the only one that's never been to jail. I ain't scared. Come and get me. You can break my body, but you can't break my mind. Bar Nation State wanting you dead. The War Room is the, is the number one enemy you wouldn't want me coming after you because they will get you. Today, we are quickly approaching stage three, the end game. It's going to be pretty difficult to do from jail, but if it's a possible move on the chessboard, I guarantee you the war room has accounted for it. Stage three can unfold in a few different ways. One outcome that was clear from the Vice documentary is that they are building the first digital cult. Although it seems like they're consenting to this hypnosis. So it's more like a tribe where Andrew's the chief and Iggy is the shaman. Your sons will marry their daughters. Your daughters will marry their sons. The I memory Tate son and I'm top G. Known as one of the best fathers in the war room. You will create the legacies. Naming your kids after other people that you care for. You join the war room. There's a specific room called Our Young Kings. I'm going to do my best to program my children. Enjoying those juicy steaks. We make sure our children associate with each other. The shit they watch on the internet is going to program them. The friends they're hanging around with are going to program them. It's that finer scotch. So I need them to be around an environment where everyone else kind of understands that, that harsh reality. And I'm going to do it. So smoother cigar. In the future, when the dystopian, when the machines arrive, when the Terminators turn up and you're like, where's John Connor? Where's John Connor? Oh, he was an act of fiction, but there is a man. There is a man who does exist. There's a man who's real. He's from deep in Mongolia and his name's Emery Andrew Tate the Fifth. The story of Emery Andrew Tate the Third will be one of the classic tragic hero. It's some fucked up things. But he's sacrificing his life for the cause. There was conversations about the fact that I might have to martyr myself to get to certain uh, certain stages in the plan. Yeah. It's no big deal. Yeah. But my, my life's pretty much complete. Well, God has a plan. The universe has a plan. The world is cyclical. You can't be in charge forever. My plan was to sow anarchy. I have a calling. That's what I'm here for. Ideas are bulletproof. 